in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may he help me with um, this message and cause it to be um, words of truth. And may those that listen have their ears opened and eyes open to see as, as, as he sees and to hear as he hears. At least briefly to understand the, the mind of Christ, comprehend the mind of God, his character and intent. Um, over the years, I've, I've had some, I've been blessed to have some visits to paradise and, and, to, and to see things that are yet to come. <clears throat> and by his grace and one of the things that was um, kind of surprising to me was uh, things like uh, I was given up for adoption um, with my biological brother when we were very young like uh, two years of age or so and um, but I can still remember my biological mother, you know, hug it, hugging me. Um, that one, you know, last time, and um, one of my visits, I got to see her. Well, she she died um, younger than I am, and so what I'm getting at is in appearances. When I say get over appearances, I'm I'm saying. Um, when we're reunited in heaven, we're st we're still going to recognize, you know, people. But we're but we're recognizing who they are from a, from an eternal perspective, from an everlasting perspective, from a from a different perspective than than our relationships down here. And that's one of the reasons Christ says that. You know, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given marriage. It's 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 a different, wonderful and blessed existence, but it's it's not the same. It's not the same as down here. Down here, there's an awful lot of vanity, an awful lot of <laughs> you know, um, I don't know, pride in appearances. You know, attention, attention into our, to our physical appearance, and, and and not so much of our godly character. I mean, God's concerned about about that, about our our character and conduct. And uh, so, when He says He doesn't see as we do, but He looks upon our thoughts and intents of our, our heart, the purpose and motivations behind what we do in this life and <clears throat> so on one level what's to come is 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 being reunited with loved ones friends and family and again we all leave this world at different ages so when you first see them again it, it, it's like say you're say you're a father or a mother right and um, I don't know you die <clears throat> younger so the last time you, you see your children they're they're still little but then in heaven by God's grace when they finally join you there they might die you know having lived a long and, and healthy blessed life and actually be in, a, in appearance older than you are there in other words in between now and 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 the time when we're going to be transfigured completely into glorious immortal incorruptible beings we retain our appearance when we leave this world unless by god's grace and your prayers it's his will to whatever transform you're still recognized, but when I say transform, I mean make whole. Say you were blind or lame or somehow injured, you know, I don't know, birth defect, 
whatever. The strange thing is, is that, is that appearances are so, um, how do you say, valued down here. I'm not saying that everybody that ends up in heaven is going to look exactly the same, but you're going to be recognized as you. The perfect and good you. And and sometimes that's that's you with your scars. That's you with your, you know, injuries. That's you with whatever challenge you, you had in, in the flesh. Just like he still bears his scars. Um, his beard is still missing patches. In other words, between now and the time that he transfigures us completely, there's there's a, there's coming up there's coming there's in other words I've seen things to come, and and <clears throat> we're a work in progress, but but all creation is a work a divine work in progress. It's 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 being created and made according to his perfect will and in the end what it will be is exactly what he intended from the beginning but it's just like when we start to to make or build something down here it take the bigger the project the longer it takes and when you're talking about perfecting the entire creation the heavens and earth each and every soul it takes time even for almighty god in other words, he, yes, could have done all kinds of things instantly, but he determined, according to his foreknowledge, to um, basically, and some people, you know, think that this is not a true doctrine, but it is. We, we are given a choice between life and death, between God and the devil, between good and evil. In other words, according to his foreknowledge, he determined that he was going to test each and every soul. Try each and every soul. And so what I'm getting at is get over appearances because appearances mean next to almost nothing there other than our ability to recognize one another. <laughs> In other words... You're loved and cherished for your character and conduct, who you really are inside in eternity. And not like down here, how some people, you know, I don't know, are famous just because they're handsome or, or, or pretty or by this world's standards. It's totally different there. I mean... The, Godly virtues reign supreme, no vices, no vanities there. So when I say get over appearances, I'm saying on one level, even though you're going to recognize, everybody will still be recognizable as who they are, um, we enter into paradise when we leave this world at, at different ages. So when I say get over appearances, your 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 children won't look like like you last saw them when you left this world. They're they're gonna grow and live their lives. And so when you see each other again, they might actually be older in appearance than you are. And and I'm just saying, having had that experience where where my biological mother actually died younger than I am now, um, to see her again and, and for her to see me. It was, it was, it was yes, a, a joyous reunion, but it's, it's kind of strange at the same time when you first see each other. And I've never heard anybody say this, so that's why I'm saying it. When you first see people you haven't seen for a long, long time, for us down here, it's, it's nothing but like a day, you know. There's no time there, so you're just seeing each other again, and that's why it's kind of strange. Because the last time they saw you, you looked different. So when I say get over appearances, I'm saying on that level, um, we all 
day by day our our, our parents is are, are changing even down here so we need to know one another as God knows us inside character and conduct and and you know personalities instead of appearances and uh, that's still hard down here because this world is full of so many vices vanities fleeting things that will not be in eternity at all gone vanished poof like a blink of an eye <laughs> and then on another level now some people are really proud of their their ancestry their their so-called race or races their color of their skin all kinds of things and I'm just saying that in eternity none of that is gonna make I mean any sense at all because we're going to be transfigured we'll still how do you say have our kind of our features in other words whatever we left this world everybody's unique right and they have everybody has a unique face and so you can recognize them as as who they are just by just at a glance I mean if you know them right? and and in eternity it's we're not going to lose that uniqueness we're still going to have that uniqueness but um, it's not going to be so much so he's going to take of all nations of all tribes of all skin colors everything races etc languages and make them all one people and by that I mean um, when he makes us incorruptible immortal glorious beings we'll no, we're not going to have a, a composition of flesh and bone anymore what I saw our composition looking like was something like like refined molten metals without any any dross without any 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 corruption in 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 those molten metals and and pristine perfect gems and so full of life and energy that that it was like swirling and radiating again gloriously in other words we, we shone like the Sun and the stars with with so much life and so much energy again incorruptible immortal beings but our entire composition changes so there won't be any how do you say black brown white skin colors in other words that's how I learned that when the scriptures say they saw one shining um, like molten metals brass and, and, and bronze and so that's it that's exactly what they saw they're not describing skin color it's not like people in the past didn't understand you know the different races and the different skin colors I mean it's you can see it in art throughout history so people in, in even in ancient biblical times understood you know the different races and different skin colors so if they if they were trying to describe race or skin color they would have done so and in other words everybody interpreting the scriptures according to the flesh is absolutely interpreting them wrong when a, when a, when a prophet says he saw one shining like the Sun and and his skin was like polished brass that's what he saw polished brass molten metal he didn't see you know um, some kind of skin color of the flesh he would have said I saw you know whatever um, an ancient language you know anemian you know a, a Slav he, he would have he would have he would have referred to um, if he was looking at at somebody uh, and describing skin color and, and heritage and race and so on and so forth the Prophet would have said so they they had words 
in their ancient languages for such people ancient words yes so when they say they see one that looks like metal that's what he looked like okay that's what the vision the vision is not lying to you it's not to be interpreted according to your carnal thinking according to your racism and that's why I mean get over appearances um, nothing in the Holy Bible is, is anything viceful anything you know racist I can't believe how many people try to try try to filter what they read in the Holy Bible through through that evil nonsense in their head down here in other words to the pure all things are pure but to the defiled nothing's pure because they're wearing those sunglasses and that's how they see everything you have a defiled conscience if you're racist you, you read the Bible through 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 the sunglasses of racism and and I've seen it among all races in other words you know God um, in the Bible is 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 always the same one true God but it's amazing how many people change his appearances to be like what they look like just because they're racist and that's all races now um, Middle Eastern and and <clears throat> and again um, in that part of the world you can look at ancient Egyptian hier hieroglyphs there were already all skin colors thousands of years ago so it wasn't like mankind started out all white it wasn't like mankind started out all black it was that it was that from the very beginning Adam and Eve's um, children were of, of different skin colors and yes even today you know um, um, people of um, African descent now sometimes they say they're albinos but not always sometimes they have you know very light complected children and you know they look at each other kind of suspiciously but but it's just the, just just the fact and especially over time now with all the hybridization all the all of the travel on the planet interbreeding and so on and so forth um, sometimes um, you know people that look very white ha have had children that look like African descent and they look again they look at each other kind of suspiciously but 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 the reason for that is is it just genetically many races are actually you know um, have a have an ancestry that that traverses many continents and in and in traversing many continents many different skin colors in their heritage so just because you're white today doesn't mean there wasn't anybody black in your past and just because you're black today doesn't mean there wasn't anybody white in your past get over appearances get get over racism I mean really um, get to know each other after character and conduct your personalities there's a lot of evil in this world and so try to try to perceive um, people as 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 they are as they present themselves to be uh, everybody's capable of both good and evil but but those that have the, the Lord Jesus Christ in their life are, are by his grace and power stepping on evil thoughts and tendencies and putting them under their feet so they don't actually act on them and they do their best to act on, on on those righteous good thoughts and impulses that God plants within their souls so what I'm getting at is 
we need to get over appearances down here because just daily we all our appearances change just through I don't know the aging process for us all and then there's things like injuries and tragedies and all kinds of things that 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 change the way we look from from even day to day let alone year by year throughout our lives so we need to get over appearances just down here but like I said when you leave this world and you're reunited with friends and family you're all you're they're not gonna be as as you remember them from from down here if you went before them or vice versa and so when you meet that that first initial meeting yeah it's a great feeling you still recognize each other but it's also kind of strange it's a little strange I mean like I said I mean can you imagine being a parent and you die and when you die your your children are still only knee high but the next time you see them they're like old and gray-haired or white-haired fully 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 grown lived out their lives it's 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 a wonderful experience seeing your your son or daughter again but but sometimes they look like they could be your your parent if you died much younger than the, than they when they leave this world and that's why I say a little strange it was like me seeing my biological mother right I mean she looked at me and, and like the last time she saw me I was only two years old a little toddler and when we saw each other again you know I was obviously a lot older a lot bigger she was you know smaller and younger and so it was she still knew that I was her son that I was her baby boy but but it's kind of strange it's kind of a strange reunion in that first moment when you first see each other again it's wonderful it's a happy moment but it's it's unusual and I've never heard anybody speak on these things so that's why I'm speaking on them so they can um, because because I've I've had those experiences I I know what it's like now and um, any rate um, it's just sad how far away th this present reality is due to vices due to evil in this world from what it's going to be and 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 and, and, and it's sad that the that the Holy Bible is interpreted through so much evil subconsciousness so that they can't understand what it's really saying the reason God looks like you know polished brass or 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 like you know in in the visions of revelations is because he's giving a spiritual depiction that he's pure that he doesn't have corruption in him at all He's holy and good. In other words, if you're not spiritually interpreting the scriptures, you're interpreting them wrong. And like I said, I saw ultimately when he makes of all races. You see in the book of Revelation that they're all, all the races, tongues, and tribes are all clothed in white robes. We're all wearing the same white robes because God's taking up of all people he created and made and making them one people holy unto him in the white robe is 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 again a, a, a signification of purity of having been washed clean no sins no filth no nothing evil nasty dirty impure unclean And that ultimately he's actually really going to change our compositions they won't be temporal flesh and bone that can be hurt and killed and so on and so forth at all they're going to be a composition of something that is immortal and incorruptible 
and it's and what I saw it looked to me like again you could still see like my features my nose you know my eyes whatever see in other words you could still recognize each person but our compositions were no longer skin no longer flesh and bone they looked like like limitless energy and and like um, like I said molten metals not just brass but but silver gold platinum titanium like molten all kinds of mixed molten metals and and all kinds of, of precious gems and just like infused with so much energy they were just swirling and flowing and radiating from from within us our entire beings were the the composition of our entire beings were were something really glor truly glorious and hard to describe because the best way I, I could could maybe depict it as if I had really good quality software and could show you on a computer because being infused with that much energy and light there's no shadows so it's it's darn near impossible to draw or paint what I saw you, it could be digitally created like with the new you know holographic technology to be closer to what I saw and it still wouldn't be the same but but it would be a lot closer so that people could understand what I'm trying to say in words that we need to get over appearances because our appearances yes yeah, so we're still going to be recognized as the individuals that we are but we're going to be completely changed transformed and what I saw was not anything anybody's not gonna like or enjoy you're gonna look awesome you're gonna look like sons and daughters of God Almighty gods gods and goddesses absolutely and uh, and it was a wonderful thing but there's there's stages there's stages and that's why the scriptures talk about also different places of the departed because there's there's stages there's like this there's things that are occurring now there's things that will occur and then there's the ultimate end in in perfect perfected creation in holy unity with the creator all all of this is 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 the building process the creating process the making process the perfecting process and then we finally get yes it's done now we're with God incorruptible immortal eternal beings to enjoy creation to as gods and goddesses I imagine create will probably have I don't know like I said I think the scriptures say we're gonna have you know stars of our own I think maybe whole maybe whole galaxies who knows if he calls if he calls the entire heavens and earth right now the city Jerusalem and he says if you're faithful you're gonna be given cities plural it could be what, what we think of as whole universes for us for us to create and so on and so forth again ultimately all still approved by the one true and only God the one who created and made us but my point being is, is who knows we'll, we'll, as far as I can tell we'll be learning from him for all eternity and 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 just like you know um, we get more proficient down here you know over time we're having learned from him I can't see why his sons and daughters won't be like him creating and making things and and enjoying creation and just anything good no more evil 
sometimes I think when he, you know, um, you think about that, he, he, he calls um, the waters the peoples and the nations. And then he talks about, you know, a crystal sea. Um, it could, these all could just be spiritual representations about, about again, our transforming process, getting rid of all the corruption and, and becoming pure. And, and, and then, and then when it says that, um, there will be those that, um, are rewarded with honor, um, praise for whatever good thing you did to in his name and to his glory um, that's that's God basically boasting about his sons and daughters look what look what she did for me look what he did for me and it and and that's God praising you before us all that that's that's honor that's 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 how do you say being recognized um, though maybe in this life you're just not and um, he sees all knows all and he's got every little tiny detail I mean written down he, he, he knows it all in the, in the book of remembrance and uh, those that have made their peace with him have their sins blotted out in other words all the evil you ever did, ever thought, everything is, is blotted out and removed from that book of remembrance. So only when God boasts about his sons and daughters, he won't be exposing any of your sins because they will be washed away if you've made your peace with, with him, having been washed by the, by the blood of the Lamb, by his own holy blood. You're, you're cleansed. And by that I mean the life is in the blood. That's what, that's what blood actually does in your body. It removes all of the waste from every other cell and it brings fresh inspiration and, and, and nutrition the life of the body really is the blood if, if you lose your if you lose your blood you lose too much of your blood you're dead the life really is in the blood and and then so the spiritual life is is in the the holy blood of God it's not something you need to He's, when he said, you know, take this cup and drink it, he's not instituting vampirism. He's not instituting cannibalism. Some people are so messed up and so warped, they actually think that. No. He, he's, he's saying, look, the things I've created in visible reality demonstrate things that are spiritually true. Your physical blood is the life of your body. God's spiritual holy blood is, is what inspires you, is what cleanses you, is, is what gives you life, everlasting life. Without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have it. So if you're, if you're dismissing, denying, or in any way, shape, or form, um, denigrating Christ crucified in your behalf then you don't know God and and you're not saved and you're on your way to dying in your sins and facing the divine consequences of his wrath your sins won't be washed away instead you're going to be judged and all your sins will be exposed so that's the difference between the sheep and the goats between the people of God and and, and the devil and 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 everybody like him who were unrepentant, wicked sinners all their days, is that their sins will be exposed. So that's why they bear shame. It's 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 going to it's going to shame them. All their wicked thoughts, words, ways, and deeds exposed to everyone else. It's going to shame them. And and the righteous bear honor. Because all their sins are washed away, and and all that's remembered is is whatever, even tiny little things, things you might have forgotten, God remembers. Whatever you did that was good and right. In His sight. Especially if you did it in His name and because and out of a consciousness towards Him. It could be anything. 
you, it, it could be the, the, the way, um, I don't know, you, I don't know, diddle doodle one day. Seriously. Every little thing that, that you do to the glory of God with a consciousness towards him is, is remembered by him and honored by him. So when you really do the things that he asks you to do, like love each other, comfort each other, do your best to help each other. Because he said so with a consciousness towards him. Those, those things are like fanfare trumpets. You're gonna, little thing down here honors you forever. So do those little things. Do everything to his glory. And, and get over appearances. In other words, um, we're all created and made by the one true God. So we all potentially, you know, are going to be everlasting brothers and sisters. And that means we should act like it down here. When we see somebody, you know, really suffering, um, somebody homeless, to deck, even if even if they're not with banners asking for help, just just being there, help. Do what you can. Um, a lot of us are, 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 you know, so close to that situation ourselves that there isn't much we, we can do other than, I mean, pray and sometimes you don't have, you know, much to give, but give what you can type thing. any rate, uh, God, God's good. He doesn't want to shame you. He doesn't want to punish you. He doesn't want to throw anyone into the lake of fire. He, he does it out of necessity. In other words, if you, if you refuse to stop attacking, stop, um, I mean, doing evil things to other people, if you refuse to stop being evil, then he's got no choice but to separate you from them. So that so that you can't harm his sons and daughters anymore. Now it's a battle down here, so he temporarily allows this conflict, but he doesn't allow it for all eternity. And that's why there's that's why there's a separation between the sons and daughters of God and those of the devil. Ultimately, those of the devil refuse absolutely refuse to stop being evil. Now, in between now and the ultimate judgment of all souls, um, there's places of the damned. Now, he describes some place called Sheol. Um, we in the English refer to it as hell or hellfire. Now, it, just, it sounds like a horrible place. Sounds like toxic fumes. Um, sounds something like, you know, if you've ever been around, you know, an erupting volcano, you know, um, hot, sulfurous stench, you know, fire and brimstone. It sounds like that he's like, like he takes your soul, your spirit when you die and puts you someplace, you know, um, under the surface of the earth that is not pleasant, but very hot and very toxic. <laughs> and and sounds like severe punishment. Um, he also talks about another place called Outer Darkness. Now I went there, so I can tell you that the reason I went there was because um, I had forgotten, due to all the years I spent in, in our course public indoctrination, I had forgotten that as a small child God was teaching me even when I was two and three years old in dreams and visions and I had forgotten about all those things until he anointed me and reminded me 
we all come from God and I think a whole bunch of people just forget I think this world is full of so much evil that I think it darkens their conscience and and, and blinds them to the truth and sometimes so completely that they just can't even when you try to try to show them you it's it's like almost impenetrable it it, it takes it, it, it in other words their their deceptions and delusions are so strong that it really does take a divine miracle to reach them and that's why those that get saved like me we spend the rest of our days trying to at least testify so that so that you hear hey look you know I understand deceptions and strong delusions because I once believed the same things you're believing those same lies those same deceptions and delusions and and they're powerful they're they're they they're they're they're, they're seemingly convincing they, they they seem like they like when you're believing them they seem like they're like they're true and they're not what's what's true is what the Holy Bible is telling us that's true and from Genesis to Revelation all true don't dismiss any of it and um, if you're believing anything or anyone above the contents of the Holy Bible you are you are deceived and and or self-deluded and you find that out the hard way when you take your last breath now, when I was a young man, I died, and I ended up in outer darkness because I was believing, you know, in evolution, and and that there was no God. You know, I was I was so stupid. I was deceived. I really wasn't thinking it through. There's no explanation for reality before our eyes without God. There just isn't. There's no rational, reasonable explanation for. Our existence and the existence of the universe before our eyes without God there just isn't and anybody thinking there is is deceived and self-deluded there isn't there's no explanation no no rational reasonable explanation without God there has to be an eternal cause for finite creation period and that eternal cause is God and you don't get an order out of chaos so any of that nonsense no chaos theory no you don't get um, intelligence, knowledge out of ignorance. No. Knowledge is always taught. It's always passed down. It's always conveyed. Intelligence, any, any intelligence that exists now, exists eternally because of our intelligent, eternal creator. Or it wouldn't exist. In other words, you don't get self-replicating cells from, from nothing. And you don't get, you know, um, the universe from nothing. And you, and you don't get, um, how do you say, more complex multi-celled organisms from less complex single-celled organisms. None of that nonsense is true. It's, it's all bogus. You don't go from asexual reproduction to to all the symbiotic simultaneous relationships necessary for sexual re reproduction and all the symbiotic simultaneous relationships that are necessary to sustain each and every creature along the tree of life without intelligent design period with, without God you just don't get it in other words you can't you can't go from that single-celled organism it's impossible to to um, to simultaneously a banana and a monkey that eats the banana to stay alive and you, and you don't get you don't get how do you say anything in between there to, to to simultaneously each and every time each and every time each and every living organism has exactly at the same moment evolves exactly what's necessary for that for the, for that organism to stay alive you don't get one of the words you don't get complete and total transmutations into fully functioning organisms across the entire you know um, kingdom 
from one magical morphing cell it never happened it never will happen it didn't happen it's impossible it's not possible what's being taught today in the name of science isn't even scientifically possible it's not scientifically feasible in fact everything we know about science says says that what they're teaching is is pure bogusness and it's it, and it's only out of desperation of god deniers and you just can't get around no way to get around it god is that's reality period no ifs ands or buts about it folks now I've, I've found that out the very hard way like i said i died as a young man believing that bogus crap and um god was i wouldn't say laughing at me but but was like you know conveying to me when i was in outer darkness all right wise guy you know you think you're so smart type thing you're in other words god was letting me know how foolish i was how it how absolutely ignorant i was how deceived and self-deluded i was and he was doing it lovingly you know because he sent me back gave me another chance but but he was he was kind of chuckling he was like you think you're so smart you're, you're an idiot you know basically and um and the sad truth is is compared to god almighty we're all really ignorant even when we've i mean spent an entire lifetime in deep study and learning and they down here we have terms like experts nobody's an expert at anything down here we're we're like even on our best efforts we're we're i mean just like compared to eternity compared to real masters and real experts that you know i mean in paradise for millenniums of real musicians and so on so we don't nothing down here we're, we're just little kids i mean even when we're 80 years old now down here you know we're you know supposedly you know respected elders and this and that supposed to be but people are losing those values too they're not respecting the wisdom of elders anymore any rate um get over appearances everything down here is fleeting temporal nobody's an expert even when we think we're doing something right we're messing up like like genetic modification of anything see if you believe that nonsense of evolution then you then you just think that just meddling with um genetics is no big deal but when you understand it's all carefully divinely designed and that messing up with any part of the entire ecosystem of earth is 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 catastrophic in other words right now you you still can't see the long-term ramifications of what you're doing but when you make when you make any food indigestible to microbes or to or to insects or to you're you're you're, you're actually making that food toxic poisonous to life in general to us more and more digestive problems more and more um allergies more and more immune system complications and it's, it's a, a bunch of it is is the result of, of genetically modified monocultures that are, are that are intensely sprayed with herbicides and pesticides our food is becoming increasingly toxic and increasingly poisonous to us and all those genetically modified organisms actually are invasive to the entire ecosystem so what you're doing now you don't see the full ramifications of but you're 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 basically you're basically sowing death and destruction while thinking you're doing something good and you're not you're doing something terrible um corn all kinds of of, of, of grains are becoming I mean increasingly indigestible I mean increasing amounts of cancers increasing amounts of, of chronic ailments conditions like I said digestive disorders breathing disorders all kinds of ailments are on the rise and a lot of it's due to everything you think that you're doing that is supposed to be somehow good is not 
You're, you're, you're killing yourselves. You're killing the planet. Now, I'm not saying that um, genetic research should end. I'm saying it needs to um, be more concerned with preserving um, divine designs than altering them. I'm saying it needs to be more concerned with studying what God has done and replicating it like uh, bio nanotech for, for treating ailments instead of toxic chemicals. In other words, big pharma and drugs, no. Bio nanotech with uh, injectable healthy immune systems with with healthy uh, red and white blood cells with with programmable you know identifier leukocytes that can target any and all ailments any and all you know bacterial coxal viral infections i know i sound like a broken broken record but in, until i see people listening and actually doing that i gotta keep mentioning it That, that's the way, if you really want health and welfare, that's where R&D needs to be, not in drugs. In the meantime, instead of toxic, you know, pharmaceutical drugs, what really needs to happen is a, a thorough investigation of all naturally occurring medicinal plants, especially in the Amazonian, you know, region, South American region, rainforest. You know, God revealed to me that there's just, I mean, you're clear-cutting billions of dollars of irreplaceable health remedies when you, when you, when you start um, um, bulldozing the rainforest. It's retarded. It's one of the stupidest things mankind's doing right now. I mean, you're, you're killing yourselves on the planet. You're just you're, and and because the people doing it just are clueless. I'm concerned. I'm really concerned about the about the near future. Um, generations now on the earth, but 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 maybe two or three generations from now, but that near future, I'm, I'm concerned that the, what is taking place right now is bringing horrific consequences rapidly upon the planet, upon all mankind. And um, it's this departure from God, from the Holy Bible, and, and from his instructions in it. It's a departure from um, giving the land rest I mean, really following his instructions because, because they are pertinent to his creation, to this, to this temporal existence and your quality of life down here. So if he says, let the land rest on the seventh year, every seventh year, you really need to do that. And he will bless you with enough in the six years of toil before that seventh year of land rest, if you're farming to make it through that seventh year and that'll give you a whole year to not just rest from your farming labors but whatever make repairs to the house build furniture some whatever hobby you might really like to do and, and just as long as, as as you rest and and celebrate you know that the lord is giving you rest He lets the land rest on purpose, constantly polluting it, constantly herbicides, pesticides, is making the land and the aquifers and everything toxic, making the food toxic. You're killing yourselves. We you need to return to, to God and his ways. And they're not how do you say, Bronze Age mythology ways. No. 
they're the, the, the ways of, of the creator for his creation for all time. And, and thinking you know better than God is, is what's killing you and killing the planet. You don't. No one does. No one ever will. But learning from him and, and, pre, and preserving and, and keeping, you know, um, his ways from generation to generation will prolong your, your, your lives, your quality of lives, your, your blessed existences. Doing what, what mankind is doing right now is bringing rapid death and destruction on the planet massive amounts of suffering raping robbing pillaging plundering instead of resupplying replanting restocking if i had my way every single neighborhood instead of just lawns would would have instead of just you know in your right of ways between your streets and your houses, there's typically a sidewalk, and there's also a right-of-way which allows um, for the expansion of, of roads as necessary for more traffic in the future. But in the meantime, there's just grass in all these neighborhoods in those in those right-of-way regions, along highways and everything. If if I had my way, man, people would be planting all kinds of of, of fruit and nut trees that are pro climate appropriate wherever they live in in their suburbs in their cities urban tiered farming urban tiered ranching i mean really focus on maintaining biodiversity the way god designed it S steer clear of genetically modifying anything anymore stop that you really, you really don't understand the harm you're doing. It's, it's major. It's not a good thing. Now, sure, everything looks, you know, good when you go to the store, nice and shiny and bright and round, and, no, you know, no insect bites or anything like that, and so on and so forth. But all I'm saying is, if the microbes won't eat it, if the bugs won't eat it, and stuff it's it's toxic to a varying degree now I'm not advocating that you, you you put you know bug infested you know fruit and vegetables in stores I'm just saying stop modifying them re return to the old ways and sometimes some fruit and some vegetables are are how do you say um lost in in the production process on purpose that's that's the natural way of of, of creating bioavailable um, restoration in other words some fruit and some vegetables um, goes to seed some are are, are sustaining the birds which sustains you know natural pollinization and natural um, um, reforestation and natural I mean the entire ecosystem is being sustained by the life that God's given it and it had to be all created and made at once it could not have come from some primordial soup over billions of years no could not have happened there are just too many symbiotic relationships that even today, if, if one of those keystone species goes, the entire chain goes. So extinction events tell us very plainly that, that those organisms are completely interdependent upon one another. They could not, how do you say, over billions of years just all those symbiotic relationships just happened to have developed. 
because they need each other instantly from the get-go or, or neither of them sus sustain each other neither of them can stay alive it's just like going from asexual to sexual reproduction there had to be had to have been a simultaneous event a fully functioning simultaneous event fully functioning male and female reproductive systems in 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 a in a complex organism in a complex sexually reproducing organism in order to have sexual reproduction it could not have been you know asexual and then oh, billions of years you know there was i don't know one little aspect of, of of a male organ among the asexual and then you know billions of years you know there was one little aspect of the female reproductive system and then eventually <coughs> two completely unrelated <laughs> asexual organisms because again if if it was if it was little changes over 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 long periods of time then th then that entire female thing came from um a system and and developed its own female aspects and so on and so forth over millions of years or whatever and then this different branch was developing males aspects no couldn't have done that it, it, in order to have sexual reproduction they they had to have been i mean fully formed and like organisms just like today you can't you know you know take i don't know a bear and reproduce it with a flower you know, they they have to be they have to be like kinds fully formed in order to reproduce so evolution does not explain reality it never has and never will it's just nonsense and the more you think about it the more you deeply think about it the more you analyze it the more you realize it's total fabricated nonsense divine designs just like he tells us he created all things and he made them to re reproduce like kinds that's exactly what we see in reality the Bible is what we see evolution is not what we see the Bible coincides with observable reality evolution doesn't in other words lies and deceptions are lies and deceptions they're not true So when you believe lies and deceptions and then you start um, acting on those lies and deceptions, you're contributing to death and destruction because lies and deceptions come from the destroyer. And that's why all your genetic meddling is, is, is actually interrupting the cycles of life that God designed. It's dangerous it's extremely dangerous and I'm not saying be cautious I'm saying stop it because you just don't realize the full ramifications of what you're doing in other words how destructive how catastrophic And instead study you know heirloom varieties and preserve them for everything don't don't modify them um, st study healthy blood healthy immune systems imitate don't modify in other words um, virtually every plague in history um, had survivors 
now why why do why do some people die some people survive even, even when they're exposed to the same plague the same bacteria the same virus the same ailment now some people say it's evolution but the scriptures scriptures tell us that a certain amount of mankind dies from whatever diseases so on and so forth um, based on their relationship with him and and if you have I don't know a heritage of, of godly people that prayed for you and so on and so forth uh, you sometimes survive things that other people don't now in the natural world they're looking for natural remedies but my point being is that healthy immune systems have identifier cells based on what they've been exposed to if you survived it so anybody that survives anything down here Ebola or whatever already has within in their own body the technology if you want to look at it that way necessary to fight that ailment and that's what I mean by R&D needs to go to bio nanotech and replicate you know healthy blood healthy immune systems is anybody that's been exposed to anything and survived it has has an immune system identify ourselves in, in their leukocytes for that ailment and for overcoming that ailment <clears throat> and all you have to do is study it and replicate it now I say all it's I know it's much easier said than done but you're taking stem cells and, and doing all kinds of things that are just in my opinion insane when you could be using them for that to, to basically cure all, all forms of cancer to basically cure all forms of bacterial coxal and viral infections plagues diseases healthy blood the life is in the blood so maintaining healthy blood is is the surest way to to preserve a, a healthy life overall and 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 pro actually prolong your days if you if you want to prolong your days frankly heaven's so much better I I don't know why anybody would want to do that but but I don't know there might be a reason in the future if there's if there's massive population decline with everything you're doing for trying to make sure people live longer in order to give them more of a fighting chance to reproduce and regrow their numbers I don't know some people think God will return before things get that bad but I don't know I'm just not I'm not so sure I saw so many possibilities of the future I saw I saw you know things could actually be better if people would just come to the realization how much suffering is enough before you all come to your senses and and, and return to God I mean all these people that want to want to see Armageddon and devastation on earth I'm like are you out of your minds I know I know that they're they're thinking that 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 just puts us one day closer to the return of Christ but as far as I can tell even without mankind and 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 their own destructive nature due to the fact that the devil is ruling too many minds down here due to the fact of how many people still haven't obeyed God repented and received his Holy Spirit so the spirit of the devil is in all those people and that's why they do things that are destroying life on earth they're greedy viceful selfish hateful warlike etc etc they're doing evil things because the devil is ruling their life instead of God So that's why when we say Christ is the Savior, 
he's not saving us um, just from hell to come he's saving us from the hell mankind is already in and is increasingly getting worse the longer and the more of you still let the devil rule your lives you're, you're destroying yourselves and you're destroying life on earth because the devil is messing with your minds he's the destroyer and you need hear me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ let the spirit of air depart from any and all who hear these words let your ears be open and your eyes see you need to repent you need to obey the Lord Jesus Christ get baptized in his name and get filled with his spirit right now you need to you need to make that a, an absolute priority your present existence and your everlasting destiny depends on your relationship with him you need you need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ you need to receive his Holy Spirit into your life and he'll kick the devil out permanent now it doesn't mean the devil won't still come and test you and try you try to deceive you try to tempt you or whatever he did he did that even to God so he tries but with with God in your life you have the power to, to, to tell him to beat it get lost devil in Yahushua's mighty name the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in English and uh, that's what you need to do every time an evil thought comes your way just, just dismiss it and act on only your good thoughts ask God to fill you to overflowing so there's just no room or no time to do anything wrong fill you to overflowing with what's good and right with his virtues with you know the things that will bring you everlasting joy so no racism no um, no um, judgments according to how somebody looks um, now I'm I'm not saying be a fool if you if you see somebody that's undergone extreme body modification a man that that's transforming themselves to a woman a woman that's transforming themselves to a man anybody that's transforming themselves into looking like a devil or a dragon or a horned lizard or whatever <laughs> those are those are evidence of, of, of demonic influence if not demonic possession those are people that the devil is messing with they're not saved now they might have gotten saved and still haven't you know transformed um, their appearance back into something that's sane and reasonable it's like uh, one time when I um, was preaching this guy was covered in tattoos from head to foot with I mean devils demons 666 all this the guy the guy looked like he was demonically possessed from from all the tattoos on his body but his, his testimony was <coughs> was that God had actually saved him and, and 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 he and he was really sad that he had been such a fool and had done all those things that he now he looked looked at and, and just made him cry you know um, because you know they were permanent tattoos on, on on all over his body and and he he hated the things you know on his body now but he said you know what can I do you know um, I'm just a stained glass window for the Lord he understood how God saved him and that all those tattoos were, were um, an inseparable part of what God saved him from his testimony so on the one hand his appearance told me that oh man this guy demonic influence demonic possession you know possible and then when he spoke Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior and now I'm just a stained glass window for him
then I understood that inside, you know, was a son of God shining with light. And uh, his temporal body was just part of his testimony of what God saved him from. So, yeah, appearances do tell us things. You know, if you see somebody looking at you red-faced and, and pulls out a knife or a weapon or something like that, well, um, the appearance of, of, of him, you know, attacking you um, needs to wisely be recognized. Now, God taught me that you, you need to, um, if you have the time, to say things like, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, murdering spirit come out of him now i'm not saying you say it slow like that <laughs> i mean he taught me to, to do it like this in the name of jesus christ murdering spirit come out of all foul and unclean spirits leave this person right now you know fast i mean you're in a, you're in combat situation but it is spiritual warfare in other words what what moves upon this physical matter is spiritual energy Now, if you speak in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, English, Yehoshua HaMashiach, if you speak in the name of the one true God and you're filled with his spirit, in other words, you know that you, you have his spirit with you and you know his name is, 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 is the power and authority of the one true God, and whatever you speak against does not respond well, that's that's how you discern the difference between somebody who is just under demonic influence or even perhaps possession from somebody that is actually a child of the devil. In other words, in the scriptures, there were those that were delivered from unclean spirits that became sons or daughters of God. But there were also children of the devil in the flesh. And the way you can tell the difference instantly is whether or not they respond to the to the name and power of God. In other words, if you're in that situation and 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 the person is is truly under demonic influence or possession, then they'll stop and they'll look really surprised like like what happened? But if they're not, if they're a child of the devil, then they're, they might just laugh. In which case it's own. You know, act accordingly. In other words, in every situation, try your best to deal with all things spiritually first before you, you, you engage in any type of physical battle conflict that you have every right to defend yourself and your loved ones from mortal attack and injury it's one thing right if somebody offers a verbal offense okay that's that's easy to turn the other cheek you know forgive forget type thing but if somebody's trying to kill you or your, your loved ones it's on you you don't you don't let them just do that if it if you if you have any ability um, to stand against them, you need to do so. Now that's one thing. If you're mature in Christ and 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 you know He's calling you, you know, to to I mean, whatever certain death, martyrdom, or whatever. In other words, if you're mature in Christ, a prophet or prophetess, and you know that, that, that this is your moment in time, well then, you know, he's going to give you the strength to, to go through that and to triumph. But, but otherwise, man, if some maniac is trying to attack you or your loved ones, I mean, defend yourselves.
like I said, he taught me that, you know, I should, if, if time permits, if the moment permits, sometimes it doesn't, but if the moment permits to, to use his name, to, to spiritually, um, use the name of the one true God and his power is, is present to, to deliver, to save, to, in every situation, um, natural disasters, whatever, call on Jesus, um, civil unrest, call on Jesus, um, house fire, call on Jesus, in every circumstance, in every situation, he's present to save. But a lot of this conflict down here, I mean, from person to person, from whatever, nation to nation, from race to race, is all about appearances. And just get over them. It's just so much better to go through life making friends instead of enemies. Um... To, to do your best to get along with your neighbors instead of, you know, at constant conflict. Yeah, it's when you first, even though it's a wonderful thing to see loved ones, friends and family again, um, it, it is a little strange at that first reunion. Um, I mean, it's, it's joyous, it's happy, there's no doubt. You know, you're hugging each other, you're loving each other, you recognize each other. But it's also a little strange, it's like, Dang, the last time I saw you, you were knee-high to a grasshopper. Mm -hmm. hmm. I can remember watching, you know, um, a father and daughter um, reunion and daughter was all like daddy and the father knew that that was her little his little girl but but she was I mean older than than he was you know in appearance she had lived longer in life in this world and last time they saw each other she was still reaching up to hold his hand. So some of the time between now and the time we get, you know, ultimately perfected is just spent in, in reunions, getting, getting to, to know each other, listening, to each other, um, life stories, all kinds of things. In other words, um, in all my experiences of visits to Paradise, uh, it's not boring. It's just I, I was always just ever learning more and more about about that transitional period. And if you take the time, lots of people don't take the time these days to listen um, to the elders. I, I, like I said, I think one of the best things that could be done for the internet is where, um, and and for public education, is where it's it's just part of of, of global um, learning. 
where there's a database called the wisdom of the elders that becomes you know again just like I'm making a video but a standard standard questions you know we're, we're you know um, I don't know a senior in high school maybe a, jun uh, a junior high school at, at some point young people um, really um, are searching for their own path and their own direction but they often need wise counsel and guidance and and wouldn't it be great for young people that are trying to find their their purpose in life to be able to consult um, not just prayerfully with God but but with 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 the elders from all over the world people in all kinds of professions most important thing they learned advice for creating a better world you know standard questions that that are, are the most important for 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 learning in life purpose given to people that are are, are elders maybe the so-called experts in their professions especially but pretty much I think everybody should be given the opportunity to be interviewed from school children that are are on the verge of, of becoming adults and choosing their careers and professions and life purposes now I know that changes throughout your entire lifetime but I'm just saying young people are really hitting that okay do I go to college do I go to technical school or do I just enter the workforce do I go to you know into the military what do I do with my life and I'm saying if they had a searchable database again you have the the videos as 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 how do you say a full um, text voice to text searchable database you still keep the videos as the archives so that anybody can actually listen to the, the source directly if they want to but but you take everything they say and voice to text and you make that a searchable database on on all kinds of topics all kinds of professions all kinds of life purposes and then and then they can they can either read excerpts from from what was said or they can just if they if they really like a certain you know um, certain subject material and and author or source they can actually listen to that person you know for as long as the internet remains in that way you know old ways are not lost and and hopefully the future actually progresses even faster because the wisdom of the elders gets gets lost and 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 knowledge and and all kinds of good things get get lost or even drowned out because we don't have um, that going on as part of of the learning process and it needs to be in other words what we do have going on is public indoctrination coerced public indoctrination that's that's approved by the state a few people and those children are only getting how do you say state approved um, knowledge and 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 they're, they're missing out that's what I'm getting at now with with the internet sometimes some of the more curious people actually do search for all kinds of things so some people think the whole internet is like a database like that and I'm like saying no not really um, so much disinformation so much noise so much um, drowning out by the wealthiest people still even on the internet they've really on on mainstream broadcasting I mean it, it's just a few I think six entities over all the major networks control like 99% of all major broadcasting so there's hardly any voice of the people at all on on televised broadcasting and on the internet there's now billions of pages so there's so much noise that your chance of even getting heard seems minuscule but if if a database a specific database called the wisdom of the elders that was 
how do you say channeled with with the most important knowledge that each elder wishes to convey to subsequent generations so you're you're getting you're getting a refined um, search already by by just by just the specific questions that are routinely given to each elder of each um, each individual in life each profession wh whatever they learned by the time they're getting gray and white hairs contributed to this database that then becomes part of public education so that it's not just state approved knowledge now you're getting knowledge from all walks of life into the minds of, of young people and that needs that's what I mean by not losing um, important knowledge important things that could really help mankind in the future in other words make technological leaps that way because you've got this growing database of 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 what elders considered to be the most important things about their profession about life in general whatever again the questions need to be carefully crafted to to make that database um, pertinent and and not full of a whole bunch of nonsense or, or disinformation but but pertinent important information called the wisdom of the elders and that would that would really help um, young people and mankind as a whole by preserving that most important knowledge from generation to generation now for me it's like look there's no one that's going to give you um, more important knowledge about your divine purpose and truth than the one true God. So me, you know, the most important thing I can pass on is that everyone needs to know him personally and to be learning from him personally. And the way you do that is you repent of thinking you know better than our eternal creator. And in English, his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And, 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 and you obey him and get baptized in his name. Um, by repenting from every wicked, evil thought, word, way, and deed, and finally being ready to listen to him and to obey him. He loves you, and so what he's going to ask of you with your life is going to bring you the greatest joy. You want to know your divine purpose? You need to know the divine. There's no other way. Now you might think you found something all on your own that 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 makes you you know happy or whatever, and you pursue that for a little bit of time, and then you pursue something else for a little bit of time all on your own. But he knows exactly why he he designed you, the very purpose of your per, your life purpose, your existence, at least in this temporal flesh. And you need to know him in in order to fulfill that. He gives you the power, the knowledge, the strength, the ability to do what he designed you to do now you might have just happened upon it just because um, there's just so many things in this world that you just encountered already certain aspects that are for your divine purpose without you even realizing it but that's because God's large and in charge and he directs our steps even when we don't realize it Get over appearances and 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 know God and fulfill your divine purpose. Make the world a better place. Thank you.